But what I do know is in 20 minutes, hunting season starts. These journeys getting into sheep country are what it's all about for me. I tend to actually enjoy this stuff. These four months in the mountains, in these kind of places, this is what we live for. We're built for this country. I never take it for granted. From this moment forward, every step counts. I love sheep hunting. And the sun is shining again. They're all getting up. Dave, are you ready? The river's a little bit bony, which is perfect. It'll add for some excitement for us. Helps if there's a bit of a breeze. Fill the bag up. It's been abnormally warm in the Yukon the last few weeks, so a little bit of cold water will be a nice reprieve. It takes a bit of air. I think one more should do it. So this journey begins in the Yukon after dull sheep. It's been months of preparation to get to this point, both physically and logistically. The idea is to get in the river. We're gonna have a big paddle ahead of us and then we're gonna start out on foot after that. There we go. This is what we've been waiting for since our last sheep hunt. All of our mountain time to this point over the last six months has been all in preparation for this. These journeys getting into sheep country are what it's all about for me. Experiencing these rivers and the rapids and the nature, just getting to sheep country is in itself an amazing reward and so much fun. It's really not about the harvest. It's about this adventure and if we don't get a sheep on this hunt, just paddling rivers and having these kind of experiences, they make it all worthwhile. Every minute that goes by is just getting us that much closer to sheep country. I'm enjoying every minute of this and don't take a single second of it for granted. Before too long, the paddling section is gonna be behind us and the work is gonna get harder. <laughs> but, what a journey. Start in the valleys, work our way up into the mountains, into the glaciers, into those craggy places that Sheep call home. This is some of the stuff that most people are not a big fan of when sheep hunting. But if you can wrap your head around the bushwhacking and actually make it fun or enjoy it, then you're so far ahead of the game. It's just constantly watching your footing, constantly trying to pick roots, find good lines. This is, for me, this is like adventure racing, trying to stay on course and pick the cleanest line through the bush. It's all part of it. And I tend to actually enjoy this stuff. We want to get into this drainage, but we want to try to avoid as much bush as we can to get there. I think we've got another hour, hour and a half of, of kind of bush bashing here to get into that drainage above tree line anyways, and then we can just follow it all the way up to the glaciers. Uh, we're not through it yet, but the light's at the end of the tunnel. The tough part is walking down through these alders. You can't see where you're putting your feet. These four months in the mountains, in these kind of places, 
This is what we live for. This is really what guys like us are made of and we're made for. We're built for this country. I never take it for granted. It's breathtaking. And to be standing in a place like this is what all the hard miles in the off season are for. This is what makes life have a purpose. You know, anywhere in here, there could be a big ram just sitting in the rocks watching us walk by. So we have to just pick apart every little drainage that we go past. We're just heading kind of toward the glacier and probably the game plan was to camp up at the head of the valley tonight and then hike up the mountain tomorrow. I'm watching four rams right now. Um, none of them are any good. Like three are non-legal and the other one is just barely legal. Not what we're looking for, but it's sure great to see sheep. Since we broke through the Alpine, it's been just fantastic. You know, our goal was to get to the back of this amphitheater and that's where we're at right now. We're gonna spend the night here. We're gonna try to find a place to camp in a rock pile. Man, spectacular. I think this is camp for the night, Davey. Well, there doesn't get many better places to camp than this one right here. This is like a Yukon oasis. We've got a, a breeze coming off this glacier, which is definitely cooling things down quick. This is a flat spot in rocks in every direction for miles. We've already packed camp up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna head to east. We're gonna get up through that saddle where those rams went yesterday. Now, obviously we're not looking for those rams, but that's the country that we're heading into. We're just methodically tearing this mountain block apart to make sure that we don't go you know, past anything. Just keep methodically tearing this place apart till there's nothing left but rams. Look at two sheep right in the bottom. Right at the creek as it runs into the bottom of the lake. What happened? This morning was we crested this ridge over top of this glacier lake and I spotted two young rams right down at the toe of the glacier and they were just walking through the water and then I lost sight of them so I went to get a better angle on them and I started to glass up into the basin in the rocks. I picked out the nine rams. They're up in a place where you wouldn't expect to see sheep. Like there's no grass, there's nothing nearby. It's just a boulder field. We've got the ram we're looking for. Once again, it's a day before the season starts. These rams are just in the rocks and they're hard to see. All nine of them are standing on top of that big flat rock. You have to be aware of these two rams they walk past here, we have to be aware that they don't turn around. Be very conscious of continually watching down here as well. They can see us if we move around. We skyline ourselves, they will see us. Like you gotta be very cautious here. The bigger rams, they're taking that flat rock. They're pushing all the little guys off. Let's drop, the, drop ourselves back behind these rocks so we're not exposing ourselves at all because we're gonna be here all day because they're just bedded down and it's just starting to get hot and they're not moving anywhere. I just want to back off and put a big rock behind me. Gonna get hot. I'm sitting on top of nine rams and one is a ram of a lifetime and there's no way I'm letting these guys out of my sight if I can help it at all. This is gonna be a long, long day, fully exposed in the sun. It's one of the hottest days of the year. Where is he going? This ram walked all the way down by himself, probably about 50 meters from the lake. As you're following him all the way down there, what you can see is as he approached it, that there's this stream of water coming out and there's green. And he went to that water and he had a drink and now he's feeding on the grass. This is a good sign. There's no reason for him to leave now. They are so hard to see. I literally cannot take my eyes off them. So this is typical. Yukon weather, 
two hours ago we were cooking. Clouds had moved in and I could hear thunderstorm off in the distance. Those rams, we've watched them all day for the last 11 hours now. We haven't moved more than 10 yards ourselves. It's been a heck of a day. It's been exciting. It's been crawling around in the rocks and it's been hot. And now the temperature is definitely going to drop and it's going to cool off. But we've got rams in our sights, so we just have to be patient and not make any mistakes. Looks like we could get rained on here now. The best part about this, you can stand out in the rain all day long when you're looking at six rams on the side of the mountain over there. This is easy. This is called hunker down. This is the least windy spot around anyway. And I'm not getting wet, so it's a double bonus. And I have cheese corn. There was a rainbow. It was right behind me. And the pot of gold was the rams. So that's what we're going for the pot of gold tomorrow. That shower is going to be gone here shortly. I love sheep hunting. And the sun is shining again. Now there's 14 rams, but uh, still, there's only one in that whole group that we're after, so. Bugs are back out. The last couple hours, well, I've been sitting up here in the rain. The guys have been hiked down maybe 200 yards to a little flat spot where they put the tents up. And we're gonna have supper right here and stay here till dark. It's 9.30 now, we're not going far away. And there's not gonna be a whole lot of sleep tonight. So we've watched these rams for the last 16 hours. It's now 20 minutes to 12, and they just bedded down. We've watched them move all over this basin. We're gonna go and try to get a couple hours of sleep because I don't expect them to move anywhere. But what I do know is in 20 minutes, hunting season starts. Well, it's the morning of the first day of hunting season in the Yukon, August 1st. I am nervous, but I'm excited because this is the day that I've been waiting for all year long. They're all right there. They're up feeding. Okay, I've got to count them to make sure that they're all there. We're going to expose ourselves a little bit just to drop down into that gully. We're just going to go up about another 70 meters and then we're going to cut down through this little drainage. So just take your time and just be really cautious, super slow. Now it's game time. We gotta put it all together right now and just not make a mistake because it was 14 rams in one group. It's a lot of eyes and a lot of things can go wrong real quick. I'm hoping that they feed for the next couple hours and just kind of mill around where we can see them. And then wherever they bed down, then we can make a decision as to how to go at them. But if yesterday's temperatures and what they did is any indication of what they would do today, we would assume that they would bed down and stay there for hours. So that would give us the opportunity to be able to make a good plan and, and go at them. But to just run up there and chase them right now is the wrong thing to do. If he lays down, we gotta be on the move, ready to go as soon as he lays down. I think the patience is the, is the best course of action on this one right now. I just enjoy watching them do what they do. Three of them just laid down. I'm just gonna pop up here. They're just kind of continually moving, feeding. I don't expect them to stop until the sun comes out, crest the, this side of the mountain, and then things start to heat up. Then I expect them to start to look for a place to lay down. But the big guy's not laid down, so he's gonna indicate everything that happens. Five of the rams have laid down up there. Okay, he just laid down. You gotta go. I'll be Checking them, checking me, checking you, yeah. checking all of us. So just keep an eye on me. Five minutes ago, he bedded down. I can just barely see the backs of some of them. So we're gonna have to move, we're gonna have to move fast. All the hours of sitting around, watching, doing nothing. Now it's time to go. Okay, it's a bit of a dilemma. Where they are, I think we could get down and get up to them and take them from this side, but it's way riskier in that they're all kind of looking downhill at you and getting everybody set up. Probably the safer way is to go up the side of the mountain there, cut across and be looking down on them. 
This is where they bedded last night. That's fresh. From this moment forward, every step counts. We've gotta be so cautious. Because right now we're probably within probably 500 yards, but we're up on this little bench and we're gonna get as close as we can. Are you guys ready? Dave, are you ready? <laughs> Blew that one. I'm incredibly disappointed right now but that's hunting, 150 yards, all bedded down, 14 of them. So the one furthest to the right stood up and was looking up here. Could have winded us too. The rams are all bedded down again, right on the other side of the valley, with full view of where we are right now. Getting out of here is gonna be nothing short of amazing without them spotting us and spooking again. I think what we have to do is we have to kind of head back the way we came and there's a bit of a drainage and hopefully we'll walk down that drainage. So that's what we're gonna try to do. This is not ideal. We we're close, too close. So we're really gonna have to go slow. One person at a time, I'll go ahead, I'll look back, I'll call you guys up. All three of us cannot move at the same time. We're trying to get down into the valley <sighs> without getting spotted. The only exit out of here where we're not fully exposed is down this drainage. And this is not where you wanna be. All it takes is one rock up there. We gotta stay close to this left side, guys, because if anything comes down here, it's gonna come ripping down the middle. It's looking good so far. They're all bedded down. They've been on high alert. They're obviously feeling a little more comfortable now. We just, there's this last section that we have to get through without them spotting us, and I think we'll be good. No matter what happens from here, in the next few hours or whatever. All I can say is great job to get off that mountain without those rams busting out of there. That was crazy hard, especially when they're on red alert. What I want to do, obviously, like, this is great because the wind is coming down the valley. I want to use this drainage to get alongside them. I don't know how long the shot's going to be if we can get one, but it's probably in that 350 plus range. If this is going to come together, there can't be any errors at all. He's walking toward us. Yes. gonna let him lay down if he goes to lay down. Here we go. Ready? You guys did a phenomenal job to make that happen. Yeah, he blew me away. I thought we were done for today. And then you kept trucking forward. You don't know Greg yet. <laughs> no, yeah, I clearly don't. Uh, that was huge. Davey, forget that. That was a roller coaster. I don't think I could be any happier than I am right now because this ram has been a dream ram for 20 some years. Can't believe it. When I look a little bit emotional, I guess maybe I am. 
because it's been a, a lot of hard miles put into that guy. <sighs> Coming up onto this ram is in some ways is bittersweet. You know, I've been watching this sheep for four years now and sometimes, you know, journeys have to come to an end and the journey for him is over. Kind of for me, it's, I don't know, it's almost a sad moment where the animal that I've been pursuing for so long is no longer alive. You know, I take that very seriously because it's very real. I have no problem saying that I'm a trophy hunter when the trophy is the experience and the camaraderie and the beautiful places that we do it in. <laughs> Sheep hunters understand what it takes to get after rams year after year. There's a certain respect that you have for one another. You get out there and you work hard and you prove yourself, not to anybody else but the mountains and to you. You know, that's what I really enjoy about sheep hunting and that's why for me, it's the best game animal in the world. We just gotta make our way across this glacier. And sure, there's lots beyond it, and there was lots ahead of it, but this is just one part of it. The animal on the ground is such a small part of what it is to, to be a hunter and to be a trophy hunter. So my trophy's the experience. We're all very thankful. We've got a lot of miles ahead of us to get out. So this, this journey is not over. You know, the thing that makes hunting doll sheep you know, special for me is just to be out here in these beautiful places. This is some of the most spectacular country in the world. And when you can get out here and push yourself hard and do it with buddies. What more is there? <laughs>